Everyone, and I mean everyone, including you, has been waiting for the V8 to go in the Prelude. And if you're new here or you just don't know much about cars, a V8 is quite literally double the size of the four cylinder engines that Honda normally put in their cars. But this one specifically is nearly triple the size. Now swapping engines alone from the factory to something different is difficult on its own, let alone a four cylinder to an eight cylinder. So why am I doing it? Because more power and it's cool. But before we put it in the car, we gotta put it together. And this next bit is so satisfying. If you're not a Subaru owner, then you may have never seen a head gasket before. They get sandwiched between the engine block and the heads to create a seal. In my case, I'm using Vortec heads and basically that just means more power. And because all the power from the engine gets created right here, there are lots of bolts. You gotta make sure they go in the right order and they have the right torque specs. Also, I'm kidding Subaru owners, I love you. Next, we start working on the camshaft. Now this thing spins at high RPM, so we wanna make sure we use lots of cam lube. And to install it, it's pretty much like a game of operation because you can't see inside the engine and you don't wanna just jam it in there because you might damage something. Now this is the timing chain and cam gear. This is what connects the crankshaft to the camshaft. You gotta make sure you line them up properly when assembling them because this is where all the timing is set so that each piston is getting fuel, air, and spark when it needs to. So before the timing chain cover goes on, you guessed it, we need a gasket. The reason that this gasket looks red is because that we sprayed it with something that helps us seal and hold the gasket in place. Time to put the oil pan on, so let's flip the engine around. Now this is a little different than other parts because the oil pan is not flat, so you have gaskets in different spots. There are 18 bolts that hold the oil pan on because if you think about it, this is the bottom of the engine where the majority of the oil will sit. Now let's finish up the stuff up top. Next we install these lifters and you can see that there's holes inside that go all the way through so there's an empty space inside. That's why you can see that we let these soak in oil for a couple days before we install them. It's common practice to do that to make sure that these are filled with oil before you install them. You'll see in a moment how all this goes together. You saw us put the camshaft in, and if you noticed on the camshaft, the lobes are off center. So as this spins, these lobes are pushing against these lifters. Remember that hole right here? Well, that's where the push rod sits. And as the camshaft pushes the lifter, the lifter pushes the push rod, and then the push rod goes into the rockers. So as you can see, there's a lot of small moving parts, but let's just put them in the engine. Now you can see what I was talking about. We start dropping the lifters in place one by one. And don't worry about us making a mess with the oil. It'll all be covered in oil when the engine runs anyways. Now these are the push rods going through the heads and sitting in the lifters. Once we get all the push rods in, we can then put the rockers on. And the rocker does exactly as it sounds. It rocks back and forth. As the push rod pushes into the rocker, the rocker pushes into the valve, opening and closing them. Next, we start to install the harmonic balancer. Normally, we would have a tool to press this in place, but we didn't have one at this time, so we just used a bunch of repeated love taps to get it where we needed it to be. Then we snugged up that bolt and torqued it down to spec. And to avoid me just spinning the entire crank assembly, Fred grabbed a pry bar to hold it in place while I did all the torquing. Now we, wait, wait, wait a second. This entire video you've been telling me about gaskets, what are you doing now? You are correct, but sometimes there's applications where people don't want to use gaskets because the area is more susceptible to leaking. So they would rather use some RTV sealant. Okay, I can see that. I mean, your car is pretty cool and you do make it look like you know what you're doing. You know what? I'll even subscribe. Cool, thanks man. You should subscribe too.
This hole in the side of the engine is where the fuel pump would normally go if I were using a mechanical fuel pump. But I'm using an electrical fuel pump and this is common. That's why you can buy a block off plate that looks like this. We had to let the RTV sealant sit for about 30 minutes before we can put the intake on, but now it's ready, so let's go ahead and do that. Now the final piece was the water pump. This had two separate gaskets, one for each side of the block, and this was one of the most satisfying parts, doing the last part on the engine. We also ended up putting the valve covers on, but they're not on permanently. They'll end up coming off when we run the engine for the first time because we're gonna have to do adjusting while the engine's running. Other than that, guys, we're pretty much done. The engine is ready to be dropped in the car. Guys, get ready, because the deadline is right around the corner. And if you wanna see some behind the scenes stuff, I post almost everything on Instagram, so make sure to go follow me there. And I'll see you guys next week.